No. No buzz. A Just Bees book club. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a book I finished a, a few weeks ago or a month ago or something like that. Um, a Particular Kind of Black Man by Tope Folaren. Uh, Tope Folaren. Um, a book that came out in August of 2019. Um that I think is pretty exceptional. Um, I, I was uh, I was very impressed by it. I, I found it beautifully written, and um, it is up there, I think, in, in terms of both, like, how much I enjoyed it and how... Um, and sort of comparability levels with other stuff that I've read this year. Um, I think the things that come to mind are... Um, Julia Tsuka's uh, The Swimmers definitely um, shares sort of similar themes of, of memory and memory loss and, uh, and a play with um, first, second, and third person perspective. Um, I think there there are some similarities between it and, and Erdrich's The Sentence, um, but not nearly uh um nearly as much just like that's more of a I, I quite liked both of these books and I might I might sort of put them in the same place in my brain in terms of like just like the enjoyment of the prose and, and the way that the um style works out more than anything um but like and especially i what i think is probably my favorite book of this year so far even though it hasn't come out yet uh the furrows by um namali serpel um a uh, lot of a lot of shared dna there i think in in certain ways that um what's in this this is like three of top five books that i've read this year easy so but it, you know i'm quite high on this i think it's very good um <clears throat> i think i became aware of of tope falaren um when i guess probably most other people who are familiar with his work did um in 2013 i was part of a a blog ring thing where we were all um reading the short stories that were had been nominated for the kane prize for african writing um i don't i don't recall what his story was exactly i do recall that i liked it a lot um and i and it won um that year's prize um and so his name's sort of been in the back of my brain ever since then and then i saw this book was um was available to me uh so i i picked it up and i read it and i i i am incredibly happy i did uh high level it is about Tunde, uh, a young man of uh, Nigerian parentage who uh, grows up in Utah primarily, um, ends up um, moving around a bit and sort of is narrating it from uh, his position as being a student at, at, at Morehouse, a historically black college or university. Um, so he's like in his late teens, early 20s as a narrator. We're, we're sort of remembering things about his life. Um, the first maybe half of it is really... It's really well written um, and very straightforward in a way that um, I, th I think was like... It, it's good. It gives you a sense of, of the, the character, the way that um, his interiority butts up against his... Um, uh, uh, ability or willingness to express himself like i think one of the things that i like twigged onto very early and just like never could get enough of is how often uh tope will write out tunde's um sort of internal monologue about a thing not monologue but like um sort of affective reaction to a thing and then have the response be two words or three words or one word um, when there's a much more complicated thing clearly happening behind the surface that we've been have access to because of reading the novel, um, it's it, it is consistently used to incredible effect. It's not like a joke or a gimmick or anything. It's just a um, it's a real felt difference between the sort of internal life of Tunde and the um, the way that he projects that onto others and the way that others end up seeing him, which comes up really importantly near the end of the novel um, in a way that I won't explicitly talk about because it's been a while since I read it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm still um, pro spoilers, but uh, 
there is a thing that does happen though about halfway through where um Tunde explicitly mentions that um he's been having trouble with memory and not just in terms of like i don't know if i remember things as well as i ought to uh in terms of remembering things that he knows did not happen um he talks about having dual memories of uh like going home i believe from a drive-in movie or some or like a party or something like that where he's like i know for a fact that i left this event and my friend was like hey you want to ride home and i was like yeah it's really cold and um you know i'd, I'd love a ride um but he also can remember um with uh, incredible amounts of fidelity having walked home, having denied that and walked home that night he also remembers not going to a party and and studying all night but also um having accepted going to this party and having a really long conversation with a girl named tiffany who's never actually met and he doesn't even know is real but he can remember of like the smells and, and everything um and without going into it too much again because i it's been a while since i actually read it and i have the opposite issue with memory um it becomes this um it becomes this really special kind of novel um i think the thing at least that i immediately think of because you know wdb uh, web du bois is like brought up explicitly in this is that there is some level of it being a um a sort of meditation on double consciousness but from a a very different perspective um not a uh not a science fictional one it, it doesn't have the the novum of uh you know darko suvin's idea of like every science fiction thing has to have um some you know speculative element that uh from which everything uh blossoms something something new um it, it's all grounded um but but it's i think it's it's just handled in this really deft way that means I think you could read this book through double consciousness um, in a really productive and um, uh, like affirmative way. Not affirmative. But there's a there's a specific word I'm trying to think of um, that means like uh, positive and yielding useful results. Uh, <laughs> you know that word. The word that that, that you know the, you know the word. You're you're a bee. Um, so I think you could read it through the lens of double consciousness and 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 get something super interesting and, and useful and um, productive uh, out of it. But I also think you could read it through a lot of other different lenses in ways that are um, equally incredible. And also you could just read it for this like exquisite little, these exquisite moments of, you know, understanding a character who is explicitly dealing with things like um abuse in the home with with explicit and implicit forms of racism with um you know feeling inadequate with with different forms of poverty and 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 um familial disunity um and just be like damn this is a really really well written novel and also it's got so much other cool shit in it like i just um I, yeah, I, <laughs> there's, okay, here's, here's, I'm doing a, I'm doing a YouTube, so this is a, this is a very basic thing, right? Like this, you get open to a completely random page. This is page 22, just like literally like looking at the words, the amount of words on the page, right? Um, it's, it's a novel, right? It's, uh, you can see there are uh, a number of line breaks um for dialogue there are longer paragraphs um there there are bits of of uh there there's the small usage of um double spacing to indicate longer breaks in um in the narration this to me looks very much like a novel and it is um and then and then you jump over about 100 200 pages um, oh, I think I'm past it. I know where I was. Yeah. Yeah. So I jumped to page, uh, 234. This is prose poetry. This is, um, this is what prose poetry looks like. Um, and, and if you jump a little further backwards, this is... This is prose poetry. This is 
um, experimental fiction, maybe even, um, just explicitly not not even talking about the content, just talking about the form, the way that the words are laid out on the page. Um, there, there is, um, and in, there's a, the big break in the middle of the book, right? Not not a break, but a a sort of clarification of what's been happening, a, a, a sense that. Um, a sense, a, an explicit recognition that this is not, you know, this is a first person novel, but it's a, a novel that is being written explicitly by the narrator. So it's not exclusively in his head. It's it's a thing that he's writing down about his own past. Um, and then layered on that with the sort of um, excess or surfeit of memories um, that he's having and the, and the way that he's writing this to sort of deal with the consequences of that or, or or try to understand the consequences of that and then to it, then have it move formally in different directions because the, you know the thing i can't show just like by having you see a page in a book is uh the tense shifts that happen or the the pov shifts that happen specifically um when he decides that what he needs to do is write in a different way so that these um allegedly false memories um don't sort of take over that he remembers the truth of the world um but also the ways that like there are interstitial chapters that are um Tunde's conversations with his grandmother in Nigeria and and um they are such fascinating little things because they they don't have the interiority of Tunde they are just sort of transcripts of the conversation so you get to see in like hyper detail the way that um, Tunde does not actually say almost anything when he's when he's talking to people. He says, "Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, um, thank you. Uh, I think I understand stuff like that." And and yet those those conversations almost immediately get turned into action. And one of those conversations is the grandmother saying, "Like, hey, you're having this memory issue. Why do you keep talking about reality? Why don't you sort of embrace this this aspect of yourself?" And then the next bit is buck wild because you know from having read these things that Tunde takes this advice incredibly seriously. And so there's just no way to know what level of um, truth is being told here. And that should be, I think, uh, an understanding that you, you then backpile through the book and, 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 and refocus everything on. Um, or, or use as a spotlight to understand the whole rest of it. And I don't know, I just think it's, it's, um, it's a pretty exceptional, it's a pretty exceptional novel. Um, I liked it quite a bit. Uh, I think people should read it. Uh, that is A Particular Kind of Black Man by Tope Falarin. Um, and this is No No Buzz. And as always, thank you for not watching.